All right, hello and welcome back. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers. Um, I got a new pair of headphones to try to make this a little bit more of a smooth recording process. So hopefully these will do well. Uh, they are wireless, so <laughs> so they should no longer have a scratching noise or anything like that. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, I did this with the intention of trying to make it a uh, better sound quality as we go through the recording. Um, we are going through the Zeke exercises room that is available through Try Hack Me. This is one of the subscriber only rooms. And uh, this is, I guess, a continuation of the last room that we did. That was just an introduction to Zeke and some of the basic uh, pro uh, the scripts and everything else that we were running. Um, so I just started the uh, virtual machine, so which means I'm going to be using the VM in this room, and you're more than welcome to get your subscription to try Hack Me, so that you can go ahead and follow along with me in this process. It's only twelve bucks to start it, and if you click the link in the description below, you'll get a five dollar discount towards the uh, subscribe subscription. So uh, it will be seven dollars to start. And uh, if you don't want to do that, you're more than welcome to just download Zeke on your own computer and just follow along with our videos. Everything that I do on TriHack Me is accessible as well on your own computer. You could just go download the software and play along with it the way that I would. And we just kind of follow along with the exercises together. The only thing that you would have to find would just be some practice files because TriHack Me gives us a lot of practice files on top of the actual virtual machines that they give us, as well as the software, so on and so forth. So all you gotta do is like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified the next time that a video comes out. And that's it, basically. And you'll get the notification, you'll get a new video, and then we can just hack along together. So uh, this machine has already started, and you should already be aware of what uh, Zeke is, so I'm really not going to spend too much time on the introduction. And really the introduction is just the fact that we're going to be running a bunch of Zeke exercises together. So it's kind of just skipping through the, the whole introduction itself. And we're just going to jump right into the first set of exercises. All right, so basically the first set is for an anomalous DNS activity. Uh, it was assigned to us, there's a case um, and we got to inspect the PCAP files that are connected to the case and retrieve the artifacts to confirm that it is a true positive. So not a false positive. It's an actual positive anomalous DNS activity. And so we're going to be uh, investigating PCAP files and logs and so on and so forth and just pulling certain information out of it. The hint right here is that for the first one, DNS tr uh, quadruple A records store IPv6 addresses. So most likely we're going to be searching for IPv6 addresses. The second question hint is that the duration value represents the connection time. So we've got to search for that when we do Zeek cut. And uh, the last one, oh, there's a big hint. So it says you need to use the DNS query values for summarizing and counting the number of unique domains. There are, there are lots of ciscoupdate.com queries, meaning that all of this in the uh, in the beginning, we have to probably try to find the DNS queries. Uh, you need to filter the main address and find out the rest of the queries that don't contain this little piece. Um, you can filter the main Cisco update DNS pattern as a Cisco update.com with the following command cat DNS log Zeke cut query a rev, which reverse, and then you're going to cut that out of it and it's a, it's a pretty nice filter. There was an entire section that we did on filtering and everything else that is going to be available in the other two Zeek videos that are going to be linked uh, in the description below as well as in the, the at the end of this video, you're going to get links to it. So uh, if you want to go do those videos first, just so you can understand what the basic commands are and how we're going to do these filterings, I would definitely invite you to do that. Uh, other than that, we are going to just jump into this lab. So I'm going to open up this thing in full screen and we are going to get going. Here we go.
So first thing we got to do is we got to actually go into the desktop and we got to get the exercise files. So that is that. Let me zoom in a little bit so you have access to everything on the screen here. Um, so yeah, we do. Uh, we did CD desktop exercise files, and where I mean, it's wherever it is on your computer. You got to go into that place just so you can run it. <clears throat> when you run Zeek, uh, it will create a the log files inside your working directory, inside the working folder. So wherever we actually run it, it's going to dump out all the log files in that. So for the first one, we are going to be doing anomalous DNS. That's the name of the, uh, the exercise. So we got to go in there and then these are the things that we're going to work with. So the command is very basic. You can do CR or you could do dash C dash R and then you're just going to read the DNS tunneling PCAP and we don't have to use any uh, filters or any or any excuse me no, no signatures or no script or anything like that. We're just going to read it and see what we get. Okay, there we go. And now we have our log files. So now we got to start searching through the DNS record or the DNS log itself. Uh, the first thing that I really like doing is just so I can see where the columns are and what options we have available in the columns. I like running less. So it's you just pipe less, pipe being that vertical line that you just saw. And then when you press right, it just kind of takes you through all the columns and it it's not exactly aligned. So you see how the last column it says rejected here and then we still have to go and there's more information. So this last column right here is rejected. And then there's gonna be the column before this, which is going to be what? The TTLS, so time to live se uh, seconds probably. And then you have the column before that, which is going to be the answers. And then you have Z, I don't know what that is. Uh, there's RA, RD, uh, TC, so all of that. So Z, R, A, R, D, T, C. And this, this seems like Boolean. So true, true, false, false. Um, and then we have no error as far as AA is concerned. Then you have the R code name, which is probably be zero. You have the R code, which is MX, C name, so on and so forth. And then we have the Q type name. Then we have the Q type and then Q class name and Q class. And so it said in the first hint that we're supposed to be looking for the quadruple A. So I think the, so the R code name, I believe was this one. And then you have the R code, which is 15. And then Q type name is this. Uh, so it could be Q type name, that is quadruple N -A, A, and then there is Q type as well. So it's probably one of those two that we are looking for. So I'm going to search for that. So now we're going to do Q to exit out of that. And now we're going to run our cat DNS.log command with the Zeek cut uh, option. And we're going to actually uh, try to cut out the Q type name for ourselves. And so we're going to grip through that, meaning we're going to search through that. And we're going to search through uh, all of those things for the quadruple A. And then we want the unique count. That's what we want. So we want to see how many times that thing shows up. And uh, that's it, basically it. So we're going to go through that entire column, because if you remember, there was a lot of different results that came through that column. So we're going to go through that entire column. We're going to grip for quadruple A. And then we just want to see how many counts there are. And so it says 320. So let's try it. So if we went over here and did 320, that should be good. OK, great. So moving on to the next question, which has to do with the con.log file. What is the longest connection duration? And it said the duration value represents it. So we're probably just going to search for the duration value uh, inside the con.log file, which is this thing right here. So we're going to do the cat uh, con.log, and then we're going to do z cut for the duration. And we're going to sort through that. Let's see what shows up. And it's right here. So the longest one is 9.420791 or 9.420. Yeah, no, whatever. <laughs> That's the number. 
So we're going to paste that in here and submit that. And that should be the correct answer. Great. So now we're going to do the DNS log file, filter all unique DNS queries. What is the number of unique domain queries? And they actually gave us a sample command here. So I'm just going to copy this right here and we're just going to test this out to see if this is a good command. So we're going to just paste this here and it's going to Zeek cut the query uh, in reverse order and cut all those things. So let's see what shows up. And it says Cisco update. Is that the name? No, it just says, what is the number of unique queries? So one would be the answer, right? Hmm one does not seem to be the answer. So that can't be it. So let's see what happens. Okay, so obviously, because of the fact that I didn't even use the because it in the hint that they gave us, they didn't even sort and they didn't even look for the unique. So I'm gonna kind of use this differently. And we're gonna run there you go. That makes more sense because this was all the same result. So it's like, well, it can't just be one option or one answer for this. So we sorted it. And so one, two, three, four, five, six would be that thing. And then there's a, another option as well that we could always add to the end of this, which is the, I think it's WCL. And it should, yeah, it should also, it, so it's gonna count the lines basically. And the answer for that would be six. So now we can go back and try six and see what that does. And that is the correct answer. Great. So now there is a massive amount of DNS queries sent to the same domain name. This is not normal. Uh, let's find out which hosts are involved in this activity. Investigate the con.log file. What is the IP address of the source host? Okay. So from previous tasks, I know that we're looking for the ID origin host, as well as the ID of the responding host. And uh, we're going to cut literally ID origin host like that. And then there's the ID respond host like that. So we're going to cut those two out. And then what we want to do is we want to sort them and we want the unique count. So if we did that, now we get to see the the number. So you see how there's like this large number next to all of these IP addresses over here. So I think it wants the, the what is it? I mean, it's the same IP address anyway. So it's the 10, 20, 57, three. I think that's the answer. So let's see. And that is indeed the answer. Okay, that was pretty good. That was an easy one or at least an easy ser series of questions. So now we are going to move on from anomalous DNS to phishing. Okay, the phishing uh, exercises are pretty much the same intro. So this case was assigned to you, investigate and confirm that it's a true positive. So we're gonna investigate the logs. What is the suspicious source address? And it's going to be in defanged format and defanged format basically just means you put brackets around the dots of the thing so it doesn't uh it doesn't it's not clickable that's what defanged essentially means and we can use uh, something like cyber chef for that or you could just manually put the brackets around the the dots so that's fine um, then there's the http log file which domain address were the malicious files downloaded from enter the address in defanged format uh, investigate the malicious document in virus total. What kind of file is associated with the malicious document and investigate uh, the extracted malicious exe file. I'm guessing that's the answer over here. Let's just try it just for the hell of it. No, it's not the answer. Okay. Dang. <laughs> well, like, just in case, why not? Uh, what is the given file name in virus total and then investigate the malicious exe in virus total. What is the con? contact the domain name, enter it in defanged format, and then the HTTP log file. What is the requested name of the download malicious? Okay, so let's see what the hints are here. So Cyberchef can defang. Okay, I got it. Cyberchef can defang. Got it. Search MD5 value in virus total um, VT relations. I guess that's kind of where we're going. Um, and then what is this? 
VT behavior, DNS relations, cyber chef can defang. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. They don't want to give us too much. They don't want to make it too easy, right? Okay. So the first thing that we got to do is go to the proper folder here, which in this case is going to be the phishing folder. So we're going to go back one and then we're going to go into phishing. And there is our PCAP file. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to actually read the file. So zekecrphishing.pcap. Okay, and so we got the log files. And now we're going to do some logging activity or uh, excuse me, uh, investigating, I should say. So uh, we are going to first analyze the DHCP. So investigate the log, what's the suspicious source address and so let's do dhcp and we have that and uh what i'm looking for is the source address which is uh essentially i want to say it's the same thing as the ip uh ip host or something like that right one second Okay, so the actual parameter or the option that we're searching for is this thing. So we're going to search for the client address and uh, it's going to be uh, cat um, DHCP log and we're going to Zeek cut client address and we want the unique. And so there is a command for the command line that actually turns something into uh, the defanged version of something and it's this and it's it looks kind of funky so I understand that it looks the way that it does and hopefully it'll work I'm not sure if it's going to work or not but it should spit out the defanged version of the IP address so we don't have to go to CyberChef to do it and it did not work it seems like so let's see I used this part wrong. So it's supposed to be this version. So it's going to be forward back dot forward square bracket. So that should work. There you go. All right, we got it. I know it's a, it's a little funky of a thing, but it's kind of useful to have this in your arsenal as well. If you don't want to do that, if you just run this command and I'll run it for you, just so you can kind of see what it looks like without this little piece right here. So if you just run it, it'll spit out the IP address for you. But we want the defanged version, which is just putting brackets around the dots. And you could do that manually as well. It's not really that big of a deal. Or you could run it through CyberChef. Not that big of a deal. But that's basically what it does for you. It defangs it. And then you can submit it over there. And there you go. You have the answer. So we're going to investigate the HTTP log file now. Uh, which domain address were the malicious files downloaded from and enter it in the defanged format. So we're going to go back here and we're going to investigate the other file. So, so same thing. So we're going to first do cat uh, http.log and then we're going to do a less command just to bring everything onto the screen. And I want to see if I just maximize this. Maybe it's easier to organize this stuff. Let's see what that looks like. Not really. <laughs> this is no, nowhere easier. So we're just going to quit and go back to the shrunken version so I can zoom in here because that is definitely not useful. Um, so we're just going to cat http.log and let's see what shows up. We have a good amount of stuff and everything's at the top right here. So you can kind of just go through these things and uh, let's see, we're looking for, what's the question again? Um, we are looking for uh, which domain address were the malicious downloaded from. So enter your answer in defanged formats. So which domain address was it downloaded from? I'm going to say that it's host, or I'm going to guess that it's host. So let's see if it actually is host. Okay, so when we run cat uh, http.log, and then we do zcut host, we get two options, basically. We have two different options here. Um, and so smart facts and then www.msft and CSI, so on and so forth. And uh, though just by the way that this has been given away, 
it doesn't look like it's the www dot because the 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 syntax right here is kind of also a hint um, and we could always just try both just to see what's available um, but it's saying um, what it was downloaded from and so there is another option that we can search for which I believe is URI uh, which is uh, the kind of like the actual link that was accessed so if I run that let's just run that real quick and just so we can see what else comes up. So if I do that, it actually shows us which one was the exe. So this one, the smartfacts.com is the only one that actually had the exe, the executable, 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 Jesus, the executable file attached to it. So now we can run the command again, but now we're gonna run it with our little defang code so that it can just defang it for us right so uh, it's going to be this and there you go and it's i mean it's so easy to just defang it by yourself literally because all you have to do is just put those brackets around the dot but it's good to learn certain activities so that's it. So the command cat HTTP Zeek cut the host and grep smart facts because that's what we got out of here. Um, and then we want the unique. So just basically the one version. And then we add this to it at the very end just to turn it into a defanged domain. And so now we're going to go here and paste it in here. That should be all good. There we go. Okay, so investigate the malicious document in virus total, what kind of file is associated with the malicious document? And the malicious document is this thing. So knr.exe. So if we copy that and let's see what we can get if we actually went to uh, virus total. Okay, knowing that virus total requires either the actual file itself or the hash of the file, uh, we need to get one of those two. And I actually don't know how to download files out of PCAP files, uh, so or log files, I guess. So there's a script that uh, uh, comes inherent with Zeek that allows us to try to find the um, the hash of the files that are attached to it. And the script is called the hash demo dot Zeek. So all the Zeek scripts end with dot Zeek. So if we just run this, uh, it says, did I, oh. I messed up the spelling of that. So it's not phishing cap, it's phishing pcap. <laughs> so phishing pcap, there we go. And so now we should have it. And now there should be a files log. There we go. So there's a files log here. And so now we can kind of run through the files log and see uh, what we can find. And what we're looking for is the MIME type, M-I-M-E. So the MIME type and uh, inside the files log, there's going to be MS, MD5, SHA1, and SHA256 hashes. And they're asking for the MD5. So we're going to uh, go through the log file and we're going to cut the MIME type as well as the MD5 value of it. And I guess we want Word, MS Word application okay so let's copy this and i'm just going to open up a new tab and i'm just going to go virus total and search for it by the hash and press that in here and it gives us a bunch of stuff right here and so what we're looking for is the file type and at the top right here the very first thing is DOC. So I wonder if the answer is DOC. It is not DOC. Okay. So let's see what we can get as any other potential answer here. Okay. Under the relations tab in virus total, if you scroll down, there's a file type right here and it's VBA. So VBA. Okay. That's a good one. Okay, fine. So now investigate the extracted malicious.exe file. What is the given name in virus total? So 
So we're going to go here. We're going to run a very similar command to the one that we just ran right here. And it's going to be the command to search for uh, the, the file that is exe instead of word. So essentially the same exact command, except that what we're doing is we're changing this to exe right here. And so now we're going to get a new hash. I'm going to copy that hash and we're going to go into virus total and we're going to search for that here. Okay. And that whoops, wrong place. We're going to go here and we're going to paste this in here. There we go. Please wait window.exe is the answer to that one. And so investigate the malicious.exe file and virus total. Uh, what is the contact contacted domain name? Enter in defanged format. So we want the contacted domain name of the .exe file, and we want it in defanged format. And they gave us a hint with this one. So VT behavior DNS resolutions. So VT behavior, and we're going to go to DNS resolutions. And I just searched for it, literally control F or command F, depending on where you are. And so it says you want the, what do we want out of this? We want the contacted domain name, the contacted domain name, kind of drop down some of this stuff right here. Um, so, I mean, uh, because there are so many of them, honestly, there, and I, it could be any of these things really, I, I don't think it was like Bing or Microsoft or anything. Um, I noticed this piece right here, uh, where it's a, an I, IDS rule that is crowdsourced and it says hop2.org. So I'm going to say it's hop2.org and we're going to go back to our little file right here. And we're going to just run hop2.org uh, through our little code, right? So it's going to be echo uh, hop2.org. And we want to do the SED e s uh, forward back dot uh, forward and then brackets and then forward G. There you go. And there we got it. Uh, there is a, and I'm going to show you how to do this on CyberChef 2, just in case you've never seen it, because I feel like you should also learn how to do that. So if we go to CyberChef, and it will be this thing right here. And so you can put something in the input, like so, hop2.org. And then what you want is you want it to be defanged. So you just search for defanged URL right here, and then you click on that and you just drop it in this little thing and it automatically gives you the output down here. So it's actually, I would say it's quicker probably to do, to do it with CyberChef, but I'm kind of obsessed about learning things with the commands, uh, command line. So I did it through that. And so finally we have the investigate the HTTP.log file. What is the request name of the downloaded malicious dot exe file. So let's go to the http.log file. And what is the requested name of the download malicious file? Okay, so we're gonna run the same search, essentially the same search through our http.log file. And we want the exe, right? So grep exe. Let's see what we find in here. And there is just one exe file, really. It's this thing. It's the knr.exe. There you go. Got it. Okay, cool. Not bad. This one was a little bit more time consuming, but I think it was, it was okay. It wasn't bad. It was the defanging. That was a little bit of a challenge because I was trying to figure out how to do that. And then just searching for these particular things. And I, I did get a wrong and answer a couple of times. So this was more challenging than the last task for sure. But hopefully you actually learned what we did. And if not, you can just go back and review it. And uh, I will try to be better at explaining things. <laughs>
And uh, yeah, all right, so now we're gonna move on to the next task. Okay, so the last one is the log4j exploitation. So log4j is an actual exploit. It's like a vulnerability that exists um, and it's you know relatively well known, I guess, among the cybersecurity community. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to see uh, if this was the actual attempt, right? If there was an actual log4j exploitation attempt done. So uh, we're going to investigate the log4j pcap uh, using the detection log4j script. So I guess that's a, hopefully that's one of the pre-made ones and it wasn't like written by somebody because they, uh, Zeke has a lot of scripts. Um, so we're going to investigate this file with this script. And then once we have a signature log, we're going to investigate that and see what is the number of signature hits that came through with that. Then we're going to investigate the HTTP log, what tool is used for scanning, uh, then again, and what is the extension of the exploit file. And we're going to investigate the log4j log file and decode the base64 commands, what is the name of the created file. So uh, the hint right here is user, user agent info can help for the first one. And uh, URI info can help for the next one. And then we have the uh, echo base for base64 data, base64 decode. It's a very simple but extremely useful command inside the terminal for Linux, Unix, uh, that can decode base64 data, which is, I mean, just super freaking useful. So, um, okay, so that being said, we are going to now jump into the very last task here, our very last task to get this freaking thing done. Here we go. Uh, let's jump into it, and we got to go into the log4j folder. So... we go and we're going to go to log4j and we are here so we're going to run the zeke against the which one the log4 shell.pcap and g and then we're going to use the detection log4j zeke script okay so now there should be there we go we did get some wonderful log files. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to look at the signature log file and see what type of information we can find uh, that might be useful for us. Okay, so we got it. And so let's click through and see what is over here. Uh, it's, I think, the note is useful. This is very, very long. So one, two, what is this? This is like, this all seems to be one thing. So the host count, what? So how many columns? There's two columns at the end. And then there is, so host count, signature count, sub message, which is that long thing that we just saw, event message, which is this, signature ID, and then you have the note. Uh, I think it's this, right? The what does it say? Which to uh, investigate a signature? What is the number of signature hits? So we have three signature hits. Is that the answer? That's the answer. Okay. Uh, investigate the log file. Which tool is used for scanning? So let's go out of here. And now we're going to investigate the HTTP log file. And let's see. Oof, too much. So cat http.log and do less again. And so which tool is used for scanning? And the hint said the user agent info can help. So let's go see what we can find under user agent info. Okay, so user agent is typically here. And Mozilla is a user agent. So I know that uh, Mozilla can be the user agent. It's a uh, nmap scripting so maybe nmap is the word yeah nmap is used for scanning too so i think it might be nmap yep very cool 
And so investigate the log file again. What is the extension of the exploit file? Oh, it's right in front of us. So exploit yada 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 dot class. So we're going to say dot class. Cool. And the log4j log file decode the base64 commands. What is the name of the created file? So let's go into the log4j log file. Where is it? It's right there. So cat log4j.log. What does it show me? Oh my god, it's a lot. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna, as always, run less. And we're gonna try to find the base64 command to try to decode it. Here is the base64 command, it seems. And it starts from here. So I wonder if I could just do this. I can't do that. Can I? I can't do that either. Wait. Oh, this is the full command. So, okay. Well, which one is it supposed to be for? Because there's several base64 commands. Decode the base64 commands. So all of them. I got to decode all of them. All right, so the first one is this command right here. So we're going to copy this and we're going to open up a new terminal and we're going to use the hint that they told us. So echo base64 data and then base64 decode. So we're going to do echo base64 data and then base64 decode. So touch TMP pwned, and what does it say? What is the name of the created file? I think it's pwned. Oh, it is. <laughs> that was, okay, that was quick. Uh, touch is a Linux command to create something and the TMP folder is a folder. And so this was the file that was made, which is pwned. It's pronounced pwned. I know it's P-W-N-D, but it's like, it's a hacker thing. I don't know why the fuck they came up with that, but they came up with that. So, and that was it. That was it, guys. We just wrapped the Zeke exercises module. So that was fairly quick, honestly. I kind of expected it to be a little bit harder, but it was nice. It wasn't bad. So hopefully you learned something from it and uh, we're about to wrap this mofo and jump into the conclusion and be out. All right, in conclusion. So we just finished Zeke exercises, um, snort challenges. We've already done all of this and there's videos attached to all of those. Let me see if I've done challenge two. I think I have, I just wanna double check and make sure that I have, I have done challenge two as well. So I've done challenge two, I know I've done challenge one and then I've done the basic module as well. So all of these videos for this is already on the channel. All you gotta do is search for Snort or just browse through them. The, the thumbnail is a pig, <laughs> a pig security guard basically, are the thumbnails for Snort. Um, then we did Wireshark. We've already done Wireshark and Network Miner. So uh, I feel pretty accomplished at the end of this room because we've done videos for all of this stuff and all of that stuff already exists and we can click complete and be happy that we can move on with our lives when it comes down to this thing right here. So uh, the next one is gonna be Brim and we're gonna end up doing a video on that as well. So definitely make sure to stay tuned. If you like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell, then you will get notified when the Brim video comes out and then you can follow along with that video and learn some cool things as well. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be a subscribers only room or if it's gonna be a free room, but just in case, uh, I would recommend you get your subscription so that you're just ahead of the game and uh, we can make sure that you have no problem accessing any of this stuff, including the, the task files and the exercise files and things like that. So the subscription itself is 12 bucks. It's pretty cheap in my opinion. But if you wanted to make it even more affordable for yourself, you can click the link in the description below 
and you will get an extra five dollars off of your subscription and yeah then we can begin our hacking journey together it'll be super fun and super exciting so <laughs> i hope you do it um but in either case it doesn't matter as long as you are uh you followed and you have the notification bell turned on then you will just get notified and then you can do it on your own computer it doesn't really matter so just make sure that you join the community. It's going to be fun to have you as a part of the community. It would be an honor. It would be a privilege. And I would love to hear from you in the comments section. So definitely let me know if you have any questions or if any ideas come up, if you want to learn something, so on and so forth. And I will do my very best to cover it in one of the videos that comes out in the future. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers. And I had a blast going through this room with you. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if nobody else loves you, Hank loves you. And yeah, just uh, peace, love, and chicken grease. I'll definitely see you in the next recording. Bye.